Hi, my name is Mirza Srar Beg. I am the CEO and founder of CTM 360. I have started this series of talk because I believe we need to make a change in the way we are managing security today. Why am I saying that is because there are issues which I want to highlight and I want to start by describing to you the rationale why I feel we need to make the change and in this talk of today I will only end up with the high level difference which I think we need to make. In the following talks I will take you in more details of this. So starting with the first part why am I saying we need to make the difference? Let us look at what an FBI director said a couple of years back. What he said was that there are only two types of companies. One that has been hacked and the ones who will be hacked. But last year the same thing was changed by the Cisco CEO. He said there are two types of companies. The ones who have been hacked and the ones who do not know that they have been hacked. So effectively what he is saying is that everybody has been hacked and he may be very right. I believe so. This is exactly what also Swift said last year. Once the Bangladeshi bank hack came to surface, they said to the banks, assume you all have been breached. And when the banks went around trying to look for it, a lot of banks did find that the breach had happened and the attackers were on the way. Even in Bangladeshi bank, the attackers were there for more than a year before somebody even came to know and they only came to know when the money was transferred. So this is what is practically going on right now in a lot of organizations and they do not know about it. This can be visible from one more angle. If you look at the data dumps, what is a data dump? When a large social media or a internet service provider is breached and the email IDs which people have used there as a user ID along with their password is published on the internet, that is what we call a data dump. Now in those data dumps, the one which was by Ashley Madison, that made it a big news because it was on a dating site and on, from there a lot of people came to know that their spouse were cheating on them. Why? Because their email addresses were in part of the data dump. Now for us what is important in that is the password along with it. Assumingly the same password they must have used across many of their accounts. So once I know the password from there, I can try in a number of their other accounts including their company email account and I may succeed. And think of it that how many other data dumps are happening. LinkedIn is another one which made big news. It was posted last year in 2016. The breach had happened in 2012. So for four years somebody had the passwords for that. They must be scrapping the data across many networks. And one person who was there who we all know is Mark Zuckerberg. His email address was part of that breach. And because of that, once this was published last year, somebody went in and hacked his Pinterest and Twitter account because the password was the same. Now, this data dumps, the one which happened on Yahoo impacted it the most because they lost a lot of value from it. And then about every week, we find a few data dumps there. The next thing which I want to talk about is the losses we are having. Last year, the estimated loss was $445 billion. And they are now projecting that this loss will go up to $2 trillion by 2019 in another just two to three years. What is going on? If we look at the actual money loss which is recorded by IC3, an organization in the US, it recorded that in 2001, the data loss, the losses from the security breaches from 17 million went up to a billion by 2015. So the losses are grow growing exponentially where we are spending and investing so much more in securing. And that is also evident from the security report which was done on the banking sector in USA. The country which has the largest security vendors Assumingly, they are spending the most money on securing the banks. And the situation is that 75% of the top US commercial banks have got malware in their environment. 95% of the top 20 US banks don't even have a grade of A or B. They are all C or less. So something is really wrong. 
if we plot it against time we see that the losses have gone much higher with time the attacks are going at a faster pace than how much we are able to manage it let's go ahead another 30 years and if we keep on doing what we are doing today then whatever we are managing will be really negligible so what i'm trying to say is we don't need to do more of whatever we have been doing we need to do it differently and the two areas which i'm projecting we need to do differently one is to redefine security and other is offensive defense so let's look at redefining security let's start by saying what are the definitions of cyber security information security and it security if i ask you <clears throat> give me the difference what you think is there between cyber security and information security i'm sure you will struggle everybody struggles everybody has their own way of defining it the difference which we notice is that over the period people have started using the word cyber security instead of information security the same national initiative which was information security initiative is now called cyber security initiative the information security groups have started calling themselves cyber security group the information security awareness we used to have is called cyber security awareness and let alone the two strong countries when their presidents meet up china and us the headline says they're both debating the definition of cyber security pretty much the same thing happens when the chinese president goes on to the uk so what's going on let's do a research across the industry to see what anybody says about cyber security the first thing which i did was i went to isaka isaka does not have their own definition of cyber security but a gentleman there tried to explain what he thinks is cyber security in his view information security is a bigger umbrella <coughs> And whatever we know within that is traditional security and what we don't know is cyber security. That is his definition. I don't comment on that. Let's go to ITG. ITG says that defined it as the protection of systems, network and data in cyberspace. Here we will have a debate on what is cyberspace. Things which I own but they are in the cloud are they in the cyberspace and so on. Let's look at a university. The university says that information cyber security is referred to also as IT security, information technology security. So they, for them, cyber security and IT security is one and the same. It's very confusing. You look across all the different vendors and every vendor tries to explain it by what their business is. And maybe you can say that I have tried to do the same, but I think in my humble opinion, my description of cyber security would make more sense in redefining security. Let's start. First look at IT security. In each of these functions, I would rather like to focus on the mission of each to understand what they are. So IT mission is really service delivery, which is about the end user, where we need to give the end user more room to work, but in a secure manner, which is similar to police in the physical world. And then we go on to information security. Information security, the mission is about information assets. It's not about the end user, which in the physical world we can say is more of less like the Ministry of Defense, the military itself. The military is trying to secure the critical assets of the country where people may die. But they need to secure the critical assets. The mission is entirely different than what is the mission of the police. Same, the missions of IT security and information security are very different. Then we come to cyber security. The mission is about attacks. It's only about identifying and neutralizing cyber attacks. These three hence give you the different picture where cyber security equates to intelligence agency in the physical world where the intelligence agencies even go out outside their country into other countries and perform covert operations to neutralize the attackers and hence comes forth the big enterprise security with four pillars physical security with the mission of physical nature of assets of the enterprise it security which the mission is the end user information security mission is the information assets and lastly cyber security where the mission is about attacks 
Now, if we try to give these different missions to the same one individual, we will have an issue. We are giving them conflicting missions and this is why I am saying we should differentiate to get more effective enterprise security in an organization. Uh, in my next talks, I will take you through in more detail of each one of them up to what I believe should be the roles and responsibilities. Thank you.